All right, we are live. Welcome door grow hackers to the door grow show. If you are a property management entrepreneur that wants to add doors, make a difference, increase revenue, help others impact lives, and you are interested in growing your business and life, and you are open to doing things a bit differently, then you are a door grow hacker. Door grow hackers love the opportunities, the daily variety, the unique challenges and freedom that property management brings. Many in real estate think you're crazy for doing it, you think they're crazy for not because you realize that property management is the ultimate high trust gateway to real estate deals, relationships, and residual income. At DoorGrow, we are on a mission to transform property management businesses and their owners. We want to transform the industry, eliminate the BS, build awareness, change perception, expand the market, and help the best property management entrepreneurs win. I'm your host, property management growth expert, Jason Hull, the founder and CEO of DoorGrow. Now let's get into the show. And today I've got two guests hanging out here with me. And my guests are, let's see if I get the names right. I've got Tyler Hayes and Joao Ritter. How'd I do? Hold on. Perfect. All right. <laughs> so they are here from representing the company Roof, from the company Roof. And um, one of you is the CEO. That's you, Joao, right? That's me. Yep. And you're both software engineers. Right. And so, um, so I'd love to start, like, let's start at the beginning. How did you guys kind of get into this? Like, how did you kind of decide, hey, property management might be a, a space that we might want to connect with in some way, shape or form? And how did and then let's lead into how Roof came to be and what it is. Sure. Uh, so we started the company in college, actually, as a hobby project. Uh, I wanted to know how to build an app and uh, lived with a ton of roommates at the time. And we had a few things that we routinely split amongst ourselves. If you reminder, shopping items, expenses, rent payments. Um, and so I started to learn how to build an app by trying to automate some of these things. Uh, and kind of part of my brain, I think, is naturally inclined to kind of put names and brands and kind of businessify things. And so over time, um, we kind of took this concept. I was working for our house. Several friends wanted me to put it on the app store, so we did, and then started talking to my good friends who I had different skill sets for myself, and we kind of worked together to make the product even better. Um, and a couple of years in, uh, super as a hobby project still, we had this app uh, for roommates to solve roommate problems or, or roommate exchanges. Um, and we had a, a landlord, uh, our, our landlord at the time, Nathan, um, he really gave a damn about his, his tenants, about us. He's very much um, in tune with, with making sure we had a cozy place to live, that problems got solved. Uh, that he addressed us as human beings and not as uh, assets. Um, but his way of collecting rent was still pretty archaic, um, really easy to kind of uh, get uh, logistics mixed up and um, not communicate the way in which we felt like he, uh, uh, in, in which was authentic to him. Uh, so we came to him and we were like, hey, look, we have this app for roommates that roommates uh, are enjoying. And I think we really want to make this company all about home and about uh, the people who share a home and make a place uh, feel like home and operate well. Um, and that actually involves not only the people living in uh, the house, but also the uh, landlords who uh, make the space available to the tenants. So funnily enough, uh, we actually didn't uh, come into the project with this intent of uh, providing value directly to landlords. Uh, our value prop was actually for roommates. Um, and I think that actually makes us uh, really interesting and uh, 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 appealing platform for landlords because their customers are roommates. Uh, and so by, by um, addressing the problem less as a property management problem and more as a tenant management problem. Uh, we really kind of get to the core of um, the problem solving that you have to do as a landlord from uh, late payments to reminders to making sure service requests uh, are uh, addressed on time and that the communication is proper between everyone involved, uh, that everyone who shares a home has the ability to stay in tune with the conversation with the landlord as you know head of house oftentimes in roommate relationships. Uh, and that's all kind of led us to to um, entertaining the idea of expanding to landlords and then going all in and being like, hey, look, if we're going to build uh, the platform of the future to make home uh, exchange possible, we have to not only solve roommate uh, dynamics, but also the, the landlord tenant relationship. All right. So, Tyler, were you one of his roommates then? No, we never lived together. Uh, although we did both have roommates, and we were we were both in college at the time. Yeah, yeah. So how did the two of you kind of pair up and in, in the business here? 
Well, I was, uh, at the time, I was in design school. We were in two different universities, uh, pretty close to each other. Um, and uh, and I, I, at some point, uh, we, we kind of talked about this idea of uh, building this app. And, you know, Joao was really interested in figuring out how to build an app and, like, get some practice in doing that, some trial by error, I guess. Uh, and for me at the time, it, it was a similar sentiment because being in design school, I was... Um, really eager to sort of like work on something, some kind of like real world projects and, um, you know, the work on something that was going to be meaningful that I could like kind of follow and like continue to invest in. Um, and, and so at the time, you know, it was very much like part of the motivation for starting the project was just like, Hey, let's like, you know, let's, let's just make something like, let's, you know, we're, we're sort of interested in learning some things and doing some things like, let's just make something. Um, right. that was kind of it at first. Yeah, cool. So, um, so then, it, when you you guys start getting this going, well, let's let's let the audience know like what is Roof. So you kind of <laughs> give us some backstory. So yeah. what the heck is it? Like, what does it do? Well, for landlords, it's an app for tenant management. Uh, so it lets you collect rent payments uh, and manage uh, maintenance requests from your tenants and communicate with your tenants. Uh, so it's all about being on the same page with your tenants and getting paid and making sure your home operates as you expect, and making sure your tenants have uh, a great renting experience. Um, so it, it solves the core uh, functionality that the landlord needs when it comes to renting uh, their home and growing their portfolio from there. And then for okay. roommates, it uh, kind of helps you share your reminders, shopping items, expenses, uh, and, and anything you may want to exchange uh, uh, throughout your, your living together. So I think that's, so a lot of people listening, they might have like Appfolio or Buildium or Propertyware or Rent Manager or Rent Tech Direct or, you know, one of these property management sort of back mm -hmm. office accounting solutions. And some that might help with, you know, the maintenance request stuff. Some of them are okay. Some of them, a lot of our clients or, or people listening will use third party tools like Property Meld or Latchel. So, but I, uh, I'm, I'm really interested and I haven't heard of anything for roommates. So that's pretty unique that have, that you have something that helps facilitate roommates. So do you find that a lot of your uh, target audience are co running college housing or dealing with college housing situations? Yeah, that's a, that's a really big segment of, of the people that we talk to. Um, but it's, it's not it entirely. Um, it, it tends to be, uh, for the most part, landlords who um, who really care about generally it's landlords with a bit of a smaller portfolio. So the kind of people who might mm -hmm. who probably know all their tenants by name, um, who you know would otherwise maybe be texting their land, their their tenants, um, having that kind of relationship with them. Um, mm -hmm. Basically, landlords who care about um, communication and especially landlords who care about actually just doing things that their tenants are going to appreciate. Um, because ultimately, you know, for a lot of landlords, they, you know, they, they, rec they recognize that the services that they can provide, the renting experience that they can provide for their tenants is ultimately going to be reflected as their brand, you know, as a, as a property manager, as a landlord. Um, mm -hmm. And for landlords who want to invest in that, those are typically um, the, the ones that we see uh, most invested in Roof. Yeah, totally. But let me double down on what you said, because I think there's a lot to be said about the, the societal trend towards uh, uh, people moving in together, not for the sake of uh, a family necessarily, but for the sake of economic efficiency, right? Like people are moving yeah. into urban areas, people are moving into college towns um, for school and whatnot. And instead of kind of living on the outskirts and pay cheaper, people try to um, live together and share spaces uh, and, and live more cheaply. And I think I, I bet that a lot of uh, the landlords listening in here have uh, rentals that they rent not to single families, even though they may be single family homes, but actually to people who share uh, a space as roommates who may have otherwise uh, don't really have a relationship uh, uh, with one another apart from being roommates. They may have found each other on Craigslist or some service like that. Um, and and the, the, what you probably run into as a landlord in those circumstances is uh, you have to keep up uh, uh, a relationship with them and normally uh, you have one head of house you know someone on the lease or uh, uh, someone that you have their email and you kind of go to uh, directly and, and expect them to convey the message to the rest of the house um, but you know that's kind of a recipe for disaster when you talk about communication when you when you are trying to rely on one person to communicate 
uh, an idea or a circumstance to a whole household. Uh, and so I think for sure there's uh, a large, like our whole, uh, the core of our app revolves around sharing a space uh, and sharing a space between people who all share the responsibility of the space. Um, and so if you're a landlord who finds yourself kind of in this puzzle of trying to manage uh, uh, roommates, um, it, it makes our app makes it a lot easier to uh, reach out in one, in one spot, uh, uh, allow roommates to split payments as they will, as long as you get the full rent ship at the end, uh, at the end of the month, um, and then give them, as Tyler said, a great experience meanwhile. Um, so there's a lot to be said about that, and um, I think we have a lot to grow to accommodate larger portfolios. Um, which we uh, fully intend to do. Um, but for the time being, it's 100% it's focused on uh, landlords who see the opportunity in creating a brand for themselves and experience for their tenants and solving problems through effective communication. So what are some of the challenges that um, people sharing a space will run into so that we can paint the picture of how, how this app solves these problems? What are some of the problems? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, we could, we could probably tape a whole podcast about that question. Uh, cool. but, Let's paint a picture here. Yeah. Uh, the, the big things, um, <laughs> I mean, it, it's it, sort of at the core of it all is, is, is communication. Like the, the problem basically is like, how can you communicate to each other? Like things that each other needs to be responsible for, things that need to be done. Um, and some of that can be abstracted into, um, things like you know if you're living together you probably like there's going to be expenses that are shared there's going to be responsibilities that are shared um and you know purchases that are shared um items you know in the household that are that, that you might uh want to share responsibility for like keeping in stock um and this is it and and those things certainly tend to change a lot from from household to household depending on just like you know what your house is like uh, so in, in designing Roof, I think we, we tried to create some tools that were specific enough to target the like main needs of people, but still general enough to be applicable to as many different types of households as possible. So um, the, the sort of target, the things that we've targeted are um, one, just splitting expenses. So uh, being able to, to um, keep track of uh, who's paying for shared things, whether it's like groceries or uh, split bills like monthly expenses like utilities or um, rent <laughs> rent yeah uh, that's kind of the holy grail of sharing a rent space, would be right? the holy grail <laughs> um, those type of things um, we, we included a shopping list feature to keep things in stock that might be shared like things like um, we trash bags and groceries um, like in our household we use it to track things like olive oil and like you know things that we share for cooking kitchen supplies that kind of thing um, mm -hmm. And, um, and then also uh, there's the responsibility aspect that I, that I mentioned. So being able to sort of um, offer some kind of recognition for saying like, oh, Joao you know, took out the trash or Joao cleaned the dishes or Joao swept the hallway, um, things like that, like re responsibilities that, that sort of affect everybody, that help everybody, um, that you want to offer some, some ability to track, but without you know, getting too into the weeds of being like passive aggressive, like, Come on, like, you know, do yeah. that. Yeah, it's less, it's, it's responsibility kind of masked as reminders, right? So you have to take out the trash on Sundays. Uh, uh, you program uh, your app, your, your roof app to uh, schedule it between your roommates, right? So one Sunday, it'll ping you saying, Jason, take out the trash. And then you, you know it's your turn. And then next week, Tyler, take out the trash. So you can kind of all share the responsibility, which I think if you live, if everyone has a roommate story, and I think the roommate story is oftentimes, uh, 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 yeah. the core of them stem from uh, uh, an imbalance of sharing, right? Um, so maybe one person's accustomed to doing everything and uh, has that sense of responsibility and autonomy, um, but they feel as though people around them aren't keeping up. Or, you know, you're on the opposite end where you feel as though someone in your house just does everything without you having a say in anything and without you having the opportunity to really be involved. Um, and so, um, all those are communication issues, which I think is a backbone, but that's still kind of abstract. So in order to make ta those tangible uh, things like expenses, shopping items, reminders, uh, really kind of lay the foundation of, of um, the interactions. And uh, rent payments is kind of the thing you sign the lease on together to, to be able to share, right? Um, and we, 
uh, really see the opportunity there uh, uh, because no matter how many expenses you share throughout the month, um, usually they add up to less than your rent payment at the end of the month. Uh, so you can imagine uh, uh, creating a more comfortable splitting environment where uh, at the end of the month I'm, I may buy you know a handful of uh, groceries and a new uh, piece of furniture, but when it comes time to pay rent, that just means I'll pay a little bit less and Tyler will pay a little bit more. Uh, you as a landlord still get the full amount. Uh, we're uh, uh, even on our end and um, all is well. Um, so nice. that's kind of our, our uh, way of operating. No. Yeah, yeah. So it's interesting because like the, really there are so many different personality types out there. So and I don't know if you've ever played around with Myers-Briggs, but in Myers-Briggs you've got, so for example, you've got uh, the ISFJ and the ESFJ personality types that are very much like givers and they're always serving people and doing stuff for other people, but they're all, they don't want to ask. So they just yeah. are doing and they're expecting people to reciprocate. Totally. And they, they're always let down, right? Because nobody gives as much as them. And totally. so, but they're like, their mindset is if I do this, people should just do it back. They should reciprocate. And a lot of other personality types, they're focused on other things. They're not focused on reality. They're focused on ideas or like code or, you know, whatever you guys might've been focused on. Right. Uh -huh. And so the challenge then gets, there's this, this power play and yeah. passive aggressiveness comes out and like challenges come out and then, you know, and then people, it, it can get ugly. And it's simply because somebody didn't communicate with somebody else. And so yeah. it really, I can see how that would, uh, would help. Uh, it probably could be used in families. Let's be honest. Totally. Right? <laughs> yeah. Totally. So, um, and it's not, it's not very, it's not dissimilar from Slack for workplaces, right? When you have a team that needs to collaborate or to get something done, uh, you're going to have different personality types and different people more inclined to step in and different people more inclined to observe and take it in and then, uh, yeah. respond over time. But, uh, if you have the right organization of, of how you interact with one another, you have access to a whole group, you have access to individuals, you have access to services that kind of uh, come through and talk to you via this medium, uh, you're able to actually uh, uh, keep clarity over the whole situation and kind of manage those personalities. And, and I don't think like, you know, Roof as, as a tool is uh, uh, particularly useful for particular groups of people, but it's really hard, as you mentioned, to solve the problem holistically. Uh, and it'd be kind of, I, I think it's, it's um, not terribly efficient to try to like solve a uh, roommate ship, right? Uh, and instead of really kind of positioning yourself as, um, you know, there exists roommates who already enjoy each other's company uh, and they, they aren't in this like tug and pull battle. Uh, they just really could use a tool to basically make concrete their group and, and their, uh, their place of interaction. Um, and then through the, that means um, you, you kind of keep organized, but you're not, necessarily leaning on the app to build your relationships. You know, I don't think we're going to build any relationships that don't already exist, uh, but, but we do have the opportunity to step in and be a tool for people who already manage themselves via spreadsheet or via uh, some other um, less efficient mechanism, right? Yeah, yeah. Cool. So, yeah, I like it. So what else should people listening uh, know about Roof? I'm really proud of our team. Uh, I think that's that's like one. I mean, that's why I love working on the project. Is I think we've managed to surround ourselves with incredible people, um, and I think you, the people who use the roof see that in the form of how they interact with us and how the fact how we enjoy interacting with them, how we make ourselves available. Our whole team, from from me all the way to uh, you know people working on sales. Uh, it's a very small team at the end of the day, so I, I don't want to say people as if there's like a, a bunch of us. It's it's. Uh, a handful of us kind of with, with pretty particular responsibilities. Um, but, you know, you have access to engineering all the way to design, all the way to decision making. Um, and we want your input. And that's how we kind of operate internally uh, with one sort or another. And we consider the landlords who use us as investors. In the way. They're investing in us, you know, by putting their portfolio uh, onto roof, by extracting value that we have to offer um, and by, you know, wanting our company as, 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 as a means to build their own company. Um, so that's something I really care about, um, and it kind of sits tangent to the app itself, but I think it's actually a massive part of, of what you're getting with Roof is, is the team behind the project. Yeah, yeah, I, I actually just want to second that because it's, it's I, I think it, um, it, it, it's something that I, 
in in my opinion, probably sets apart the sort of company that we're building. Um, you know, compared to some similar services in the same in the same industry, um, and and so I tend to sort of handle a lot of. Um, I tend to be the, the member of our team who sort of talks to the people who are using Roof the most. And so, you know, if, if you've gotten an email from Roof, it, it's probably uh, it's probably from me. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, and that's it's it's something that we benefit from tremendously um, getting to getting to talk to to people who are using Roof, and not just um, and not just from like a feedback perspective, like hey, how is this feature working for you? Like hey, what's something that you have in mind that you know could be working better? Um, it's also just, I mean, it, it feels good. It feels good to be able to, to, um, you know, hear like, like opinions that people have about like how the app is working for them and, and, um, you know, any, any kind of conversation really. And what I've found is, is that, um, the types of landlords, I think, who, who want to invest in roof tend to be the types of landlords who are very much interested in like building like being a part of building something better than what already exists in the market right now um and by nature of that they're the type of people who are really eager to sort of get involved in the way that we want people to be involved which is you know hey like if you have an idea for something that we should be doing like tell us you know like reach out to us we we maintain um a slack channel with uh some of our more like involved users um that we're always trying to invite more people to um, we maintain pretty regular email communication with like like lots of uh, quite a quite a few of our of our of people who are using Roof. Um, so like as <laughs> yeah, I I think that, that benefits us as well as the people who are using Roof a lot. Yeah, and Jason, I, I know you know for sure kind of how how uh, interconnected a lot of the property management landlord kind of financial freedom hustlers like are, right? People love interacting and inspiring one another to to take risks and to make the move and to encourage uh, and to have support. Uh, and I think uh, we're an extension of that, you know, like we're, we don't sit side by side to the landlords actually, uh, the, the real estate investors actually, you know, going out and, and uh, uh, paying attention to the market and making purchases and uh, et cetera. Um, we're, we feel like so we're very much part of that conversation. You know, if you're expanding your portfolio, uh, uh, loop us in. Uh, and we want to kind of, uh, like we pay attention to, to so many um, blogs from, from bigger pockets to just Instagram feeds of, of individuals, you know, who are uh, not only doing a hell of good work, but also like inspiring other people around them uh, in the same boat, maybe a little bit uh, earlier on in their careers uh, to, to keep going. Um, and so um, it, it's it's very similar uh, as, as a small business owner to kind of work with small business owners uh, uh, towards this common goal. Very cool. So, all right, I have feature requests then for you guys. I'm just kidding. I have some ideas. <laughs> all right, so all let's right. see. So um, and maybe these are on your roadmap. I don't know. But here's what my brain, this is how my brain works. I'm going down all these channels. I'm like, so one huge opportunity, it sounds like for you guys, is in the property management space, um, all of these property management software tools, they lack this roommate fun- functionality that you've created, this communication platform. Um, do you see the day where the 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 actual like, um, you know, maybe that you could somehow connect or integrate with maybe like Rent Manager or you kind of some, it could become sort of a strap onto Appfolio or BuildDM or something like this to where if they have some college housing, they could set up the college housing people on this app and it could feed, feed into, um, you know, or they could at least do the accounting because some some property managers are using like a third party tool just to collect rent payment, like pay lease or something like sure. that, even though they have their own system. And so I think there might be potential here for those that are doing college housing right now to use something like this. And they might have hundreds of doors. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. I think the question is kind of multifold. And I think there's several avenues of opportunity that, that um, could be pursued uh, there. And um, so the, the, the idea that Roof is a side-by-side tool to a pay lease or an app folio is interesting. Uh, uh, if you can set up your entire portfolio on Roof and either choose to collect payments directly on Roof or just mark settlements. You know, if you want to actually put in your accounting on Roof, 
Uh, we don't yet have uh, a full suite of uh, uh, graphs and charts and uh, really uh, kind of making your projections uh, known to you, but um, not yet, right? So that's another avenue is like we could just go all in on accounting uh, mm -hmm. side by side to our communication core and really offer the value of other platforms. Or, you know, if you want to use Roof side by side to it, you can just use Roof as a ledger, uh, but actually collect your payments through another software and just do all your communication on Roof. Um, right. In which case, it's interesting to entertain the idea of like a proper integration between the two because I think, uh, in essence, we are competing and we are kind of after a different market. Um, I think a lot of those tools, Appfolio uh, in particular, is uh, loaded with features that a lot of smaller owner operators don't need uh, sure. and just overcomplicate the experience. And so, sure, it has uh, uh, richer accounting features, um, but oftentimes too rich uh, just gets in the way of uh, the one report that you need or like the one piece of information that you actually come to over and over again. Uh, and so and it's too cost prohibitive for the too you know, cost small prohibitive. investor. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, and so, you know, I'm unsure if, if, if a priority of ours would be to integrate, I think we would rather compete to be honest, just because I think we see our market and our users, uh, as really valuing roof as a strong competitor to those. Um, and I think it's a massive market, right? As you said, people, property management uh, and, and investors, well, property investors kind of come in all, uh, uh, all types, you know, they all have different motivations. Um, but I think, I think the core of what you're getting at is how can we ex extract the juicy features from our competitors and make them a part of roof in the most elegant way possible. Uh, and that's something that we're incredibly, uh, in tune with, you know, how are our competitors moving, like what people are using. Um, but also I don't think we're competitor driven. I think we're, we're customer driven hundred percent. So I'd rather spend my time talking to people, uh, who are using our app. Uh, and appreciating the, the, the core set of features because then we're on the same page about what we believe to be true about problem solving and then say yes and right all right cool what a, what like what kind of financial reports do you need what kind of integration with quickbooks do you need uh and then working uh those into the app in an elegant way you know i think it's valueless to actually just build a feature and just throw it in another tab and just kind of grow your tabs of like different things you offer uh, everything has to play with one another really well so that you actually create an experience that anyone can come into uh, from one, a person with, you know, one house and a couple tenants to someone with 50 homes and, uh, you know, hundreds of tenants uh, and make the most of the platform. Um, I'm, I'm more interested in, in, in that side of things as opposed to the integration bit. Right. Well, if you're open to in the future, I think there's a whole target audience that could use this that have like lots of college housing clients th and they might, uh, Rent Manager has an open API, Buildium's yeah. been doing integrations with like Property Mill and Happy Inspector yeah. and others. And so I think there's a there's a possibility there. Appfolio doesn't generally play nice with others. Usually some people are finding workarounds, but they're still using third party tools to do a lot Absolutely. of things. So, um, so there's maybe, so the other thing I had, I was, so this is how my brain works is, um, so do you run into the situation? I mean, I would imagine one of the biggest challenges that roommates have is they lose a roommate is, and it's, I don't know if this is some sort of future sort of idea, but I imagine this comes up a lot. Like they lose a roommate, they got to figure out how to pay rent. They need to find a roommate and they want to make sure that they get, get the right fit. I don't know if this is something that you guys plan to tackle or this is a problem that uh, roof helps with at all, but. Yeah, it, it's, I'll just, I'll let Tyler into this, but I just want to say that it's, we sit and throw around ideas every single night. And it's like sure. the, most, the most frustrating piece is just sitting on this like, just like a ledgers of great, yeah, ideas, great ideas. And like yeah, yeah. Always being like, oh, we'll get to those, right? Like, but we have to do this thing that's in our face From right now. now. Um, and so, like, so how do you decide no which ideas yes. first? How do you like? How do you make the decision? Like, is it the noisiest customers or your biggest customers? How do you, yeah. as a software company, how do you decide which features to focus on and which ones to throw away? It's a great question, uh, and it's uh, it's the hardest part of the job, right? Of of kind of making yeah. sure everyone's on the same page and has a shared belief of the direction we're uh, we're going in. Um, oftentimes, I, I find that kind of short term uh, goals uh, can kind of make the most sense when everyone kind of sees w the opportunity that exists uh, one, two, three years on the line. But you still have to sit down and execute for you know three months at a time in a particular feature set or a particular. Uh, 
go-to-market strategy or something like that. Um, so you know, keeping these like these chunks of time open for discussion, and then once you everyone feels good that the product, the, the, the users, the marketing, and the sales kind of align uh, uh, to basically like, ink it all, sit down, get to work, knock it out, and then go through your evaluation phase, and then kind of repeat the process. Uh, it, always, it, it seems like the most productive way to go about it. Um, Obviously, uh, I think as your cash flow increases, as you're able to grow your company, uh, then you can kind of bring more heads, more brains onto the team, and then you can start to see if you can scale horizontally. Um, but but for the time being, I, I personally love working in a small team where we each kind of know each other intimately. We know how we work. We can share uh, pretty openly. Um, and so it, it makes the, the decision-making uh a little scarier because you have to pick a couple things and, and do them, um, but you do them so well, I think. Uh, and so, um, whatever you choose to spend your time on, you just got to do the hell out of it, uh, and and really believe that that is the right way to go. And then, you know, be truthful with yourself along the way if if you need a correction. Um, but yeah. yeah, and and speaking to the scope of how um, you know user feedback and sort of like what what some of our customers are interested in, like speaking to how that fits into the picture of like what do we build next? Um, it's it's a, there's there's certainly not um, any kind of rule for that. In fact, a lot of times um, the two are sort of at odds with each other, like the sort of things that people would would like to see us build versus the things that we decide to build. Um, yeah. And it's those are really tough decisions to make, um, especially when you have to make a decision and then you know respond to somebody who emailed you saying, "Oh, I love your app! Like I can't wait yeah. for you to build this." And then I got to come in and say, "Ah, oh, well, actually, it's it's going to be a couple months before we can do that." Um, and and a great example of that is actually you know right now and for the last couple months uh, we we've, we've been really we've been Joao and I have been really invested in working on. Uh, the new um, uh, on some new uh, iOS and Android apps that will be shipping soon, and um, at the expense of you know otherwise sort of addressing some more like urgent um, some urgent features. There's like some you know there's a couple bugs that we'd love to be fixing in the current apps, um, and every single time something is brought to our attention where it's like, hey, this this would be really helpful to have right now. We sort of yeah. have to balance and say, okay, well, you know, do we take a couple of days away from this other project that we're working on to do this thing that'll help now, or do we just sort of buckle down and continue to invest time in something that's going to ultimately be an investment in how well we'll be able to scale in the future? Um, you know, a big reason that we're rebuilding the apps in the first place is that, um, sort of from a tech perspective, the the new stack that we'll be using to maintain those those new apps will be a lot easier to maintain. And so adding a feature six months from now um, will take a lot of less effort than it would have taken you know, now or a couple months ago, um, just because of you know how we're rebuilding things. So um, mm -hmm. you know the short answer is that uh, yeah it's it's really tough and it's like sometimes one of the most frustrating things to deal with is having to tell people like I like like what you're suggesting is great, and I wish I could give you that. And we've got to make a tough decision and focus on something else right now. I think every entrepreneur listening gets that. Like we all have situations in which we have our vision as an entrepreneur or as a business owner of what we want to do and accomplish, and then we have what our audience, our target audience, is really screaming and begging for that we want to do. And so I, every property manager probably has some sort of process they want to change or something they want to improve right. or something they're dealing with. Uh, you know, so, um, and I think that's the thing to realize is that you're the software that you're developing or, you know, the business that you're building. Um, if, if you're a property manager that's listening or anything, it's always a living, breathing thing. Like it's never done, right? Absolutely. It's never done. And just like as human beings, we're never done. We're all still in the oven, so to speak. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, so there's, there's always going to be bugs. 
there's always going to be tweaks. There's always going to be changes. That's just mm -hmm. the nature of software. That's you release new features. There's going to be little things and little little nuances and little things to change. And and so over time, you build something that just gets better and sharper and bigger. And then sometimes you have to like completely rebuild something. You're like, okay, we need to, we need to. It would be better to start over and do this really well now that we've learned so much totally. than to keep trying to build on this scaffolding that was maybe not as strong so and that's just how it works i think our own our own main program our seed program we've re, it, we're on like a third total like revamp that we've done and uh, i already have a whole list of all the stuff i want to change and add and do and that's just how my brain works so so um i think so you've noted though, that, that i think is really important though is is the fact that you learn over time right so it's not about always questioning, are you doing the right thing? It's, I think, to me, it's all about knowing you are doing the right thing. You know, like yeah. if, I, if, I make a, if, if, if we make a choice to build something, right? Let's build it, let's ship it. Uh, and there's gonna be corners that need tying up some loose ends, uh, but let's ship it, let's learn from it. Let's, let's move it forward, let's put weight on it. Um, and then let's see how far it can go until it stretches, right? And let's let it stretch. Uh, let's not be afraid to like, let it stretch and feel comfortable that like, hey, the work we did uh, uh, can hold that weight. Um, but then at the same time, you have to be evaluating, all right, cool. If we then want to add, you know, n more people to this or uh, uh, scale our transactions, uh, uh, you know, hundredfold, uh, will the stretch uh, break? Uh, and at that point, you have to, you know, make a decision. Like, yes, let's let's go in and do the remodel, right? I think I think the analogy for a lot of uh, real estate investors is the remodel, where you have, you know, maybe you have a, a house, um, and you have like a really janky kitchen, and and the whole house is beautiful, but something about the kitchen just like you know is off. And you have people living in the house, and they know that they would rather have a, a nicer kitchen. It's gonna take a long time. Uh, but meanwhile, you have you know a sink in the bathroom that's like a little loose, and you have like you know, something like just a little tweak off, you know, in the garden or something. And then as the as the, the tenant, you're like, uh, like I get it. Yeah, you need to fix the, the kitchen. Like spend time there, and I'll I'll deal with the sink and the and the little. Uh, I thing need. I meanwhile, I need a kitchen. Right. Meanwhile. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. And so a big thing for us is is our Android app currently is running our web app uh, on mobile, so it works, and you can do everything you need. But but the experience, the actual motion, and uh, uh, the feel of it uh, doesn't compare to kind of what we built natively on iOS. So, you know, we have a ton of people on Android who are just like, oh, I could really use a new uh, like roof experience on Android. Meanwhile, a lot of people yeah. already on iOS or uh, on the web uh, are kind of poking at more sophisticated problems. Um, but we're like, look, uh, by building an Android app, uh, a native Android app, we're going to also be able to uh, offer this experience to a ton more people. Uh, and then actually, by virtue of doing that, we're now able to build for iPad, for, um, for, for desktop, New, new new tablets, et cetera. So it's exciting. Yeah, cool. Well, I think it's exciting here what you guys are doing. I think you've done something really unique um, in the roommate space, it sounds like, to kind of uh, solve some problems. You've probably solved a lot of passive aggressive like issues in some, uh, some, <laughs> some properties and created a lot more peace out there. And it really sounds like this is software that creates a peaceful environment, you know? um for all parties involved including the landlords so um cool so uh to to wrap this up how can people find out more about roof and uh, how can they get in touch so uh our website is is roof.io um and that and that provides a, a, an overview of just kind of the features that we offer um the different different sides of it you can read about how roommates use roof how landlords can use roof um, and there's also a little button down at the bottom called uh, says extras, and we've got. Um, does it say extras now? Do we change it? It says extras at the top. It says extras at the top now, right? So, so there's a little button called extras that you can click on, and we we try to uh, provide a lot of uh, sort of documentation to accompany um, the rest of the website, also. So you can go in there and find some more detailed information, like FAQs and some guides for how to sort of get started. Um, as a you know, as a roommate or as a landlord or a renter, and, uh, and and so there's a lot of information on there. We also um, you know we also use Twitter to get, put out some updates, uh, as well as some um, as well as Instagram, and uh, we, we try to stay kind of 
we, we try to stay pretty up to date with that. Um, and there's also our Facebook page. <laughs> we can we'll, we'll put some links to those uh, in wherever wherever Jason thinks is the best place to put some links. And reach out to us, team at roof.io. Yeah. Uh, email address. Get directly in touch with us. Uh, we'll schedule a phone call with you. We'll you know see what's up, see what's on your mind, see if roof is the right fit for you. I think you know we're open to having a pretty open discussion. Uh, we, we've cool. dealt with a lot of users at this point, so we know kind of the ones that really like just like, scrape value out of what we offer them, and those who you know are kind of still on the edge of, of being the perfect fit for them. Uh, and so we'd be happy to kind of walk you through um, making the right choice for you. Um, and lastly, I think like once you do decide, you know, if, if it, it costs two dollars a transaction to use a roof, it's, it's uh, and you can if you can assume that yourself as a landlord, or you can pass it on to your tenants. In which case, it'd be free for you. Um, and if you do choose to assume it when your tenants goes to pay, we have a little shout out for you in the app, uh, uh, saying your landlord's covering it for you because uh, they're dope. <laughs> um, but if you want twenty bucks uh, of transaction fees for free, uh, use the code three eight seven five door grow, uh, and uh, it's a proprietary code just for the show, just for the, cool. the audience here, um, and you kind of. Get started. Put some tenants on there. Uh, try it out for for a lease. Uh, you won't pay, or your tenants won't pay for about a year. Then, um, and uh, see if it's right for you. Uh, All right. The code one more time. The code is three eight seven five door grow. Okay. Cool. All well, thanks for that. Here. That's cool. So I'd be really curious. So those listening, property managers uh, that that do college housing or or deal with shared housing situations. Um, I'd be curious to get their feedback and see how this works for them. That'd be pretty cool. Well, I appreciate you guys coming on the show. Um, really great. Uh, so have you guys thought of starting a shared housing, like property owners community, like a Facebook group or something? I mean, it sounds like you've got this going in your Slack channel. Yeah. Um, speaking of Slack channel, that would be another way to, to get in touch with us. If you scroll down to the bottom of the landlords page on the website, yeah. you, can, you can request to join there. Um, creating a community like that, uh, well, it, it's not something that I think we, we, we put any plans towards, uh, but it, 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 like it it's cool when you get them together, man. So we've got our yeah. door, grow, door grow club, Facebook group, and you get these people together and they start like sharing ideas. They start helping each other and the momentum is just awesome. So I think we have a lot and of, I think here, I, yeah. and I haven't heard of anything in the shared housing sort of space, this idea of like having a property that is shared, um, you know, and these, these type of owners, you know, college housing or whatever might be, you know, a cool little, uh, community there, I guess. So anyway, check, check these guys out, get in their Slack channel, go to roof.io and I appreciate you guys coming on the show and excited to see what you guys do over the next few years here. Sounds right, uh, thanks Jason. Thanks for having us. That was a lot of fun. Yeah. All right. So for those of you that are watching, um, make sure you get into our Facebook group, our community, which is doorgrowclub.com. You can get to that. It'll redirect. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure and like and subscribe so that you get these videos. We release the videos on YouTube before we release it to iTunes. So if you're listening on iTunes, make sure you go to our YouTube channel. It's youtube.com slash doorgrow and click the red subscribe button there. Click the subscribe button and get subscribed and you'll start getting notifications usually in your browser when we release and drop new videos and you can get this information and see some of these people instead of just listen so um and uh until next time everybody to our mutual growth i hope you have a fantastic uh, day and week